the underworld, the afterlife, Jigoku, hell. There are many names that you can give to the land of the dead, but who exactly governs this dark realm? That would be Enma Dayo, or simply just Enma, the king of hell. He is a figure both feared and revered. His existence is not merely a tale to chill the bones, but a journey into the heart of Japanese cultural beliefs, a narrative that weaves through the essence of life, death, and the realm that lies beyond. Let us explore the inner workings of hell, its various levels as well as the great judge and ruler himself, as understood by Japanese Buddhist mythology. This is the story of Enma, the king of hell. Enma's story takes root not from the ancient scrolls of Japan, but rather another country entirely. Originally known as Yama from Hindu mythology, he presided over the dead with a stern hand. As the god of death, he judged all those that entered his realm. Yama's influence then began to extend beyond the Hindu religion, making its way into Buddhist mythology. And as the winds of time carried the tales of Buddhism through China and then overseas to Japan, Yama evolved into a figure deeply entrenched within Japanese tradition, eventually morphing into Enma the King of Hell. In this new world, Enma became more than just the overseer of souls. He emerged as the pivotal judge of fates, standing at the crossroads between mortality and the afterlife. His domain, a realm veiled in darkness, became the ultimate destination for the dead, a place where they would face Enma's divine judgment. But Enma's role transcended that of a mere judge. He became a bridge, a connector of worlds traveling and transporting freely between the various realms. This transition from Yama to Enma is a reflection of the fluidity of mythological figures, adapting and evolving as they permeate different cultures. In Japan, Enma's emergence marked a significant shift in the spiritual narrative, introducing a figure who would come to embody the principles of justice, morality, and the eternal cycle of life and death. In the annals of Japanese mythology, Enma stands as a figure whose presence commands silence and respect. With a gaze that penetrated straight through your soul, Enma embodies the ultimate authority over the afterlife. His appearance is not one of warmth, but of solemn duty, marked by eyes that see through the facade of mortal deeds to the truth that lies beneath. He has dresses in the robes of an ancient government official and wears a fearsome appearance on his face. Seated upon his throne, he awaits the souls that come before him, each seeking safe passage and mercy in the afterlife. Enma also has a hanji, or true form, which is that of a bodhisattva, an individual who is on the path towards Buddhahood. Enma's true form is sometimes believed to be Jizo Bosatsu, the guardian of the underworld, god of travelers, and protector of children. Jizo is warm and compassionate and beloved across Japan, a deity who made a solemn vow not to become a full Buddha until all souls have been freed from suffering in hell. Enma's role is monumental, holding the scales upon which the fate of every soul is balanced. With each soul he judged without bias. The journey after death leads to either Tengoku, heaven, or Jigoku, hell. Exceptionally virtuous or wicked lives may see direct passage to heaven or hell, but most souls venture first to Meido, a purgatorial realm. Meido, while less severe than Jigoku, is a daunting, dark place of relentless winds and daunting trials stretching endlessly without solace or comfort. Every soul, upon their death, would venture to Meido guided by three Oni. The reason for this is that most souls are a mix of both good and evil. By entering Meido, the souls would go on a journey and complete a series of tests that would ultimately determine their fate in the afterlife. At the end of this journey was Enma. He keeps a great scroll in which he records all of the good and evil deeds of each and every person to use as evidence against them when their time of judgment comes. As he looked over their deeds, both good and bad, he questioned their intentions, morality, and hearts, determining their fates. For those who were deemed morally good, they found themselves on the path to salvation, a reward for a life well lived. They either went on to heaven or they were reincarnated. 
while others faced the harrowing consequences of their earthly actions, either being reincarnated as a lesser being, such as an animal, or sentenced to atone for their wrongs in the depths of hell. The worse your crimes, the deeper in hell you would reside. This power does not come lightly. It is born of a profound responsibility to uphold karma, the balance between the moral and the wicked. Beyond the judgment of souls, Enma's purpose delves deeper, serving as a guardian of morality for the living, reminding all of the weight of their actions and the virtues by which they must live. As a guardian, Enma's presence is a constant reminder of the impermanence of life and the inevitability of death. His existence challenges the living to lead lives of integrity, knowing that one day they will stand before him, their actions laid bare. In the lore of Japanese mythology, Enma is not just a deity to be feared, but a symbol of the eternal balance between good and evil, right and wrong, life and death. Japanese mythology is a blend of various cultures and religions, such as Shintoism, Buddhism, Hinduism, Taoism, and even Christianity. When exploring Japan's mythology as a whole, there appears to be a conflict regarding the gods of death, primarily between Enma the King of Hell and Izanami the Goddess of Death. Emerging from Japanese's native Shinto beliefs, Izanami is one of the two gods that birthed the islands of Japan. Upon her death, she found herself bound to the underworld, also known as Yomi, eventually becoming the goddess of the realm. This land is filled with the souls of the dead, as well as various gods, oni, and demons. Her realm, Yomi, is a shadowy mirror to the world above, a place of gloom where the dead resided. Not much else is known about this realm, but one important fact is that Yomi and Izanami lack the concept of final judgment. In contrast, Enma's Hell, also known as Jigoku, is a structured world of retribution and redemption, meticulously designed to reflect the deeds of those who enter its gates. Here, souls are not merely destined to wander the shadowy realms for eternity, but are actively engaged in a process of reflection, punishment, and for some, purification. This distinction marks Enma's domain as not just an underworld, but a crucible for transformation where the consequences of a person's life are laid bare and their spiritual journey continues beyond the veil of death. The contrast between Enma's role in Izanami's narrative highlights the complex nature of the afterlife in Japanese mythology. While Izanami's embrace marks the end of earthly existence, Enma's judgment determines what comes after. In this way, the stories of Enma and Izanami serve as complementary tales each shedding light on different beliefs within Japan and the spiritual laws that govern the universe. Expanding upon Jigoku, we begin to see that it is far removed from the singular vision of hell known to many. It is a realm of diverse tortures, meticulously organized into levels, each a reflection of the sins committed in life. This multi-layered underworld is crafted as a system of moral reckoning, where the punishment always fit the crime. The levels of Jigoku vary in their nature and intensity, ranging from the bone-chilling cold of icy realms to the relentless inferno of blazing pits, each designed to address specific sins. The icy hells numb the soul, punishing those who turned a cold shoulder to the needs of others, while the fiery hells consume with unending heat, reflective of the burning malice or deceit harbored in life. Between these extremes lie other realms, each with its unique form of torment, from the crushing weights that pulverize the spirit to the slicing blades that remind one of the pain they cause to others. Jigoku is a brutal place and is divided into eight great hells, called Hachidai Jigoku. Each of these eight hells are further divided into eight smaller hells, sometimes more depending on the source, making Jigoku a comprehensive structure designed to administer tailored fit punishments. At the helm of this intricate system stands Enma, the arbiter of fates, who with unfaltering judgment ensures that each soul faces the consequences of their actions. His oversight guarantees that justice within Jigoku is not arbitrary, but a calibrated response to the moral weight of one's actions in life. Through this structured retribution, Jigoku serves not merely as a place of punishment, 
but as a stark reminder of the virtues that should guide one's life, reinforcing the concept that actions have consequences, both in this world and the next. The eight great hells are as follows. Tarokatsu Jigoku. Taokatsu Jigoku, the reviving hell, is a realm designated for those guilty of taking lives without remorse, including the seemingly insignificant lives of insects, if unrepented. Those within this hell were destined to endless combat, forced to fight one another with iron weapons, tearing each other to pieces. Oni, terrifying demons, roam this hell, relentlessly beating souls with iron clubs. If a soul was beaten to death, a cooling breeze revives the soul for the cycle to repeat, subjecting them to the agony of death repeatedly for a duration equating to 500 years. However, time in this hell was measured differently. This meant that the 500 years translated to over 1.6 trillion Earth years due to the different time perception. Kokuju Jigoku Kokuju Jigoku, the hell of black robes, punishes both murderers and thieves. Oni casts souls onto searing grounds, marking them with black lines. Then, using axes and saws, the bodies are hacked into pieces, following the markings made by the black lines. Other torments include carrying scalding iron or falling into a giant frying pan from a tightrope, leading to boiling and slicing. With a hellish lifespan of a thousand years, time stretches vastly longer than on Earth, resulting in about 13.3 trillion Earth years of suffering. Shugo Jigoku Shugo Jigoku, or the crushing hell, inflicts tenfold the torment of Kokuju Jigoku on those who committed murder, theft, and obscene sexual acts. Here, victims are smashed between iron mountains, turning their bodies into jelly. When the mountains separate, their bodies are restored, only to be crushed once again with the cycle repeating until their time has been served. Trees with razor-like leaves dot the landscape, and beautiful men and women gesture to the souls from the treetops. The lustful inhabitants climb the trees, slicing their bodies up in the process, and when they reach the treetops, the beautiful men and women reappear at the bottoms of the trees, beckoning them back down. As blood and severed organs spout from the bodies, giant demons and beasts rush in to gobble of their entrails and pound the souls into a bloody mush. Those who committed heinous sexual acts would be subjected to a wide range of punishments, such as being engulfed in flames, having their bodies nailed together and being forced to ingest molten metals. Their lifespans here are 2,000 years long, with a time conversion resulting in over 106 trillion human years of suffering. Kyukun Jigoku Kyukun Jigoku, the screaming hell, intensifies suffering for those who have committed murder, theft, obscene sexual acts and alcoholics. Their suffering here is ten times stronger than the previous hell. Sinners are thrown into boiling pots or locked up in iron chambers and roasted by flames. Those who committed crimes while drunk have their mouths stretched open and have molten iron poured down their throats. The lifespan of an individual here is 4,000 years, stretching to over 852 trillion years in Earth terms due to the disparity in time measurement. Daikyuken Jigoku Daikyuken Jigoku, the great screaming hell, is home to those who committed all the sin from the previous hells, with the addition of lying. Here the tongues of the damned are pierced with iron nails and stretched from their bodies until it is torn from their bodies. The tongue would then grow back, only for the cycle to repeat itself. The lifespan of one in this hell is 8,000 years, translating to an approximately 6.8 quadrillion Earth years worth of punishment. Junetsu Jigoku Jounetsu Jigoku The burning hell housed those who committed all the previous sins, in addition to holding beliefs that were contrary to Buddhist teachings. Tortures here involve beatings, impalement, and exposure to immense flames. Lifespans last 16,000 years here with the conversion reaching about 54.5 quadrillion Earth years worth of punishment. Daijunetsu Jigoku Daijunetsu Jigoku, or the Great Burning Hell, surpasses all prior hells in intensity. This hell was reserved for those that committed all the previously mentioned crimes with the addition of transgressions against a Buddhist nun or monk. The punishment here is so extreme that the specifics are never mentioned. 
What is known is that the screams of the tortured extends vast distances, being heard up to 24,000 miles away. The suffering is so great that those who are destined to enter this hell are said to experience the torture while they're alive. The duration of the punishment here is measured in Antarakalpas, a unit of time that is so unfathomably long that it defies mathematical description. Mugen Jigoku Mugen Jigoku, the hell of uninterrupted suffering, reserved for the most heinous of sinners. In addition to the previously listed crimes, this level included those that committed the act of killing their own parents and saints. Souls experience such extreme thirst and hunger that they resort to self-cannibalism. The location of this hell is so deep that it would take 2,000 years of someone falling non-stop to reach it. For some, escape is impossible, where the soul will be tortured endlessly for eternity, while others can be released and reincarnated after an unspecified number of Antarakalpas. But even then, they are believed to continue receiving the punishment in their next lives. Each of these hells serves a specific purpose, reflecting the deeds of the sinners and the belief in a moral balance that must be maintained. The punishments are symbolic, illustrating the consequences of one's actions and the importance of living a virtuous life to avoid such fates in the afterlife. The story of Enma intertwined with that of a mere mortal by the name of Ono no Takamura. The legend of Ono no Takamura is a testament to the fluid boundaries that exist between world of the living and the world of the dead. Takamura was a noble scholar, poet, and government official who lived in the first half of the 9th century. He is famous for being clever, quick-witted, and somewhat insolent. Takamura's intellect and virtue caught the attention of the gods, drawing him into a role unlike any other mortal. He became an attendant to Enma, the stern yet just king of hell. It was said that at a temple in Kyoto, there existed a pathway into Jigoku. There are many stories in that area of ghosts returning to this world and trying to buy candy from stores or visiting lost relatives. Ono no Takamura knew of this and discovered a way to travel freely between the world of the dead and the world of the living. At night, Takamura would descend into the depths of the underworld, a realm where the air is thick with the weight of judgment and the echoes of souls in limbo. Here, he stood beside Enma, lending his wisdom to the difficult decisions that would determine the fates of countless souls. His presence there was a bridge between the human and the divine, a rare instance where a living mortal played a part in the administration of the afterlife's justice. Yet, as dawn broke each day, Takamura would return to the world of the living, resuming his life as a scholar and poet. This dual existence underscores the belief in the permeability of the realms in Japanese folklore, where the divine and the mortal can interact in profound and meaningful ways. Takamura's story is a reminder of the potential for mortals to engage with the gods, influencing and participating in the balance of justice and mercy that governs all existence. In addition to Takamura, Enma employed many others. Standing sentinel at the gates of Jigoku are Gozu and Meizu, the formidable guardians under Enma's command. Gozu is an oni with the head of an ox, while Meizu is an oni with the head of a horse, and they are both said to possess incredible strength, capable of moving mountains. Their appearance strikes fear into the hearts of those who find themselves walking through the gates of Jigoku. Yet, despite their fearsome appearances, they are dedicated to their duty, unwavering and impartial tasked with escorting souls to their final judgment. They embody the principles of mercy and severity, which are the hallmarks of Venma's reign over the dead. It is said that if any soul were to escape from Jigoku, Gozu and Meizu would be ordered to bring them back. Gozu and Meizu also operate and oversee the great torture chambers within Jigoku, along with other animal-headed Onis. They are said to serve among the upper ranks of the Guardians of Hell. Their presence reinforces the idea that the journey through the afterlife is one of reckoning and reflection, where each step is guided by forces committed to the name of justice and balance. There are various myths and stories involving Enma that showcased him as more than just the king of hell. Let us go through a couple stories here. 
Akihiro. In the bustling markets of ancient Japan lived Akihiro, a merchant known as much for his wealth as for his greed. His life was marked by deception and exploitation. Upon his death, Akihiro found himself before Enma, the king of hell, his heart heavy with unrepentant sins. Attempting to sway Enma with riches beyond imagination, Akihiro presented a bribe of gold and jewels, hoping to purchase his passage to paradise. Yet, Enma, unmoved by material wealth, saw an opportunity not for punishment, but for enlightenment. With a wisdom as profound as the depths of Jigoku itself, Enma sentenced Akihiro not to torment, but instead to return to the world of the living as a person that would live in poverty. Akihiro, reborn with nothing, experienced the harshness of the life he once disregarded. Through years of hardship, he learned the virtues of honesty, compassion, and humility. Upon his second judgment, Enma recognized the transformation in Akihiro's soul, now purified of greed. As a reward for his genuine change of heart, Enma granted Akihiro a place in the serene fields of Tengoku, also known as Heaven, teaching him that true wealth lies in righteousness and virtue. The Compassion of Enma In a small village shadowed by the ever-looming Mount Fuji, there lived a devoted mother, Sayuri, whose life was shattered by the untimely death of her beloved child, Kenji. Grief-stricken and unable to find solace, Sayuri's spirit wandered, lost between the realms of the living and the dead until she stood before Enma, her heart a well of sorrow. Sayuri, through tears that seemed to never cease, begged Enma not just for her child's safe passage but for a chance to see him once more, to know that he was at peace. Enma, known for his stern judgments, found himself moved by the depth of a mother's love. In an act of unparalleled compassion, Enma opened a window to the paradise realms, revealing Kenji at play in fields of endless spring, surrounded by other joyous souls. Sayuri, witnessing her child's happiness, found her own peace, understanding that love endures beyond the physical confines of the world. This legend of Sayuri and Kenji, mediated by Enma's benevolence, spreads through generations, a poignant reminder of the enduring bonds of love. It teaches that even in judgment, there exists a profound empathy for the trials of the human heart, and that mercy can be the greatest lesson of all. In the spiritual fabric of Japan, where the living maintained a deep connection with their ancestors, Enma holds a place of solemn respect. The worship of Enma is intertwined with practices of ancestor prayers and remembrance, reflecting a culture that honors the past while seeking guidance for the future. Various prayers, rituals, and festivals dedicated to Enma illustrate the nuanced relationship between the divine and the mortal, between the judge of the afterlife and those still navigating the trials of the living world. One such practice involves offering prayers to Enma for the merciful treatment of ancestors and loved ones who have passed on, a gesture of hope that they have found peace and favor in the afterlife. These prayers are often accompanied by offerings of food, incense, and messages written on paper, believed to reach the deceased in the realm of Enma. The Oban Festival, a time of year when the veil between the worlds is thinnest, sees families cleaning grave sites, lighting lanterns, and performing dances to honor the spirits of ancestors, trusting that Enma has guided them well. Rituals specific to Enma seek to appease his judgment, with people asking for his leniency, not only for the deceased, but also for themselves, in anticipation of their own eventual judgment. Temples dedicated to Enma feature statues before which individuals can confess their wrongdoings, seeking forgiveness and pledging to lead lives of greater virtue. Enma, the king of hell, emerges from the shadows of Japanese mythology as a figure of immense power and profound complexity. His dominion over the afterlife, a realm of both judgment and compassion, reflects the multifaceted nature of existence itself. Through centuries of folklore and religious practice, Enma has become more than a mythic character. He is a catalyst for introspection, a guidepost for ethical living, and a bridge to understanding the mysteries that lie beyond the realm of the living. 
the stories of Enma, from the tales of his judgments to the rituals that honor his role in the afterlife, invite a reflection on the nature of justice, the importance of compassion, and the inescapable reality of mortality. They remind us of the delicate balance between fate and free will, encouraging a life lived with integrity in the face of the unknown. As a figure revered and feared, Nma embodies the eternal dance of life and death, offering lessons that resonate across generations. This enduring reverence for Enma, rooted in the desire for mercy and the pursuit of righteousness, mirrors the human quest for understanding and meaning in the cycle of life and death. Through his enduring presence in mythology and religious practice, Enma continues to fascinate, instruct, and guide, a timeless symbol of the journey each soul undertakes from this world to the next. Thank you all for watching all the way to the end. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it. What did you think? Did I miss any details? Let me know in the comments below. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, then welcome to the channel. I hope I earned a like and subscription in your eyes. If not, that's okay. I'll keep making videos until I do earn it. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for your continued support. I truly appreciate all the views, likes, subscriptions, and kind words and messages. Without you, this channel wouldn't be here today. That's it for now. I hope to see you all in the next one.